everyone, it's Di here from Dyer's Den. How are you going this week? This week I'm going to show you how I made this pop-up card. See, it closes down, it's a five and a half inch square card and when you open it, it pops up. So I've done two, there's a man's one and this is my original one and it pops up like so. This one I did the writing panel on the inside, this one I did it on the back. I can't see that... I think the writing panel on the back would be a much better idea. So I'm going to show you how I made this card. Now I do have something to tell you first. Um, I used a Karen Berniston um, die for my pop-up section here. But I do have, and I, I thought there will be attached to the um, tutorial, a template so all you have to do is actually print this out on cardstock and you have your um, your popping ball if you don't have the Karen Berniston pop-up ball I mean these can quite become quite expensive if you can keep buying them just for one project so if you want to do it with the template it's with the tutorial so I'll just let you know it is exactly the same except for the way it hooks on it has hooks on can't see very well on there it has hooks on both ends instead of like the Karen Berniston one it has a slot but you could always put a, a hole in here and um, cut your slot here so, so that it matches up so uh, we will start by going through all what we're going to be using and then I will show you how to make this Okay, so we're going to be using the Celebrate Sunflower um, stamp set on die set, which is new in the new catalog, uh, annual catalog. I'm going to be using this large flower and this leaf and this little one, along with Let's Celebrate You and Know That You Are Loved. Along with, and these are not stamping up ones because I wasn't going to go out and buy another set when I already had a set and that is rectangular dies, um, stitch dies. So I just, I don't see the point in buying something when I've already got it. it maybe that sounds not very nice to stamping up, but you know, money is money. Okay, so let's go through. We've got a lot of pieces here. So let's start with our main part of our card which measures 11 inches by five and a half inches. So then we're going to need, let's turn this over. We're going to need a pop-up piece for our um, popping ball, either using this template or the dies. You need an A4 sheet in whichever color you're going to do it in. Um, I'm doing mine in white because I just had plenty of white lying around. Okay, for our pop-up layer, you're going to need a piece of coloured card that measures five and a quarter square and five inch square in, in white, so coloured and white. And then another piece that measures four and three quarter inch squares for your designer series paper. For your front and inside panels, because I've done my panels here on the inside as well as the outside, um, you're going to need four pieces of card that, that seems very big, um, four pieces of card um, in the, I've done mine in white, but whatever colour, which is measures four and, five and a quarter by two and five eighths, which I've already stuck four, three of them on. And the other one that measures for the designer series paper measures five by two and three eighths. You're going to need a base piece in the white, which I've stuck on as well already, which measures five and a quarter by five and a quarter square, and the designer series paper that measures five inches square. You're going to need a writing panel for the back of your card, which measures five and a quarter inches square you're going to need a belly band now i couldn't put designer series paper on my belly band because i ran out so i'm just going to leave my belly band plain 
Um, so this measures 11 and 3 quarters, which is the full length of an A4 sheet of card by 1.5 inches. And if you're putting the, the designer series paper on here, it will be 1 and a quarter by 11 and 3 quarters. Now, because I had some tiny little bits left, I'm going to cover my ball so that it matches in but you don't need to do that you'll need a rubber band that measures approximately two inches when it's laying flat like so along the edge it, you know it, it, if it's a little bit longer you can always put a knot in it if it's a little bit smaller it's going to pop quicker but you don't want it much smaller than two inches and not probably not much longer than about two and a quarter two and a half inches when it's flat like so you're going to need for this card, oh, we're going to need another piece of white just to do our stamping on, which I've already done because we're going to use the stamps and the dies. So I've already stamped and die cut, die cut my um, sunflowers, but I will show you what I did. And so another piece in yellow just to do the other outline one. So let's get cracking and we will start by assembling our ball because this is the most time consuming part of the, the project, believe it or not. So let's find my foam folder. So what we're going to do, we've got two parts of the ball, because you need two. Now if you've got this one, the canvas one, you'll have a, a slot in there. If you haven't and you want to put a little hole and then a, a slot, I would suggest you put the two together, like so, and then do that on both of those. So what we're going to do then is we're going to pull them apart. <laughs> You'll see that we have like little wings on this part of the ball which we're going to fold under and burnish them on all four of, of those. There's only t they're only on the, the one that has the hole for the um, rubber band. And the whole idea of that is to give it extra strength so that when the, the rubber band's not pulling on it. So we're going to pop them on there and we're going to pop some glue on them just to hold them down. So let's do that first. And they're going to go on the inside of the ball so you won't see them. So let's get them done. Oops. And then that one can dry while we do the other one. So let's do this one too. As I say, this is the most time consuming part of this whole project. And even that's not too bad. Um, I can't, I don't know how to fast forward. I've got to learn how to do that. So. At this present time you're going to have to watch me do this or fast forward yourselves sorry oops okay let's pop that up there they're all nicely down now so let's give them a bit of a thing so they stay down nice and tight and now what we're going to do is you will see on your ball or on your template you have score lines around the, the middle of the ball like along the hexagon so we're going to just going to bend them and score them we don't want to tight as but we need to be able to have them so that they can pop up and you also have on this one you have only half a tab on each side where on the template you have a tab similar to the middle one which is a double tap tab again that is neither here nor there you're just going to bend them over because we're going to stick them together so so once we've done this one we'll do the other one to match I guess I could have done one of these off of line before I started, but I didn't even think of that. But it doesn't take that long. Oh, 
Um, you do need a fairly strong um, card for this because it's going to pop so you really want it to be able to, to do that very quickly. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our two ends with our slot together here and here. Can you see that those two slots are exactly the same way? So we're going to put a bit of glue on, a, on around that one. And we're going to pop that together. Now I do that, find it easier to do that laying it down so that I can get them close to each other. Because that's the only one you can do like that. And then we're going to pop our rubber band through the slot and into the hole. So we're going to work the opposite way from the slot around the ball now because it's easier, it's not going to fall out then. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to pop some glue on our tabs one at a time and glue them together. Now when you're down this you can pop these together. You can then push that nice and tightly together while it's flat. And you have your first part done. We're going to do the next one next to it on the same side. Again, together and hold it just for a second just to make sure that it's nice and glued. Then we're going to glue our next slotted one together. Exactly the same as before, all the way along. And fold them in together and glue them in together nice and tightly. Just push that one down a little bit more so than the other one. And now comes a little bit of the fiddly part because we, what we need to do, we need to grab our rubber band from inside here and slip it onto the other half of our oops, piece. This piece will start to fold in a tiny bit on the other side. That's okay because we've got a fairly tight rubber band. But that's all right. We're going to go around and finish putting the ball together and then we can check the springiness. So once we get to the next one, once again, fold it together and pull it down flat. This one here seems a little, tiny little bit tight, but that's okay. We can pop him out like so. Okay, there we go. And one more to go together here. So that is our four, sorry, six sides. How can you not have four sides on a ball? Six sides of our popping ball. And the last one is the, is the hardest one to put together, but it's still not that bad. Once we have that together, let's just make sure that that's together nice and tightly. We can check out our pop. That's going to pop beautifully. So what I'm going to do now is I have some things to cover this one with. So I'm going to cover this just so that it looks a little bit more pretty. Turn it up the right way. Might help. This is only because I have the Karen Berniston die. If you don't, you would have to draw these with your pencil before you start to get the shapes. Or you can make them in any colour you like, so you don't really need to. I haven't covered the others, just I had this and I thought, well, that was the only little bit left I had of the this designer series paper. This is from the Poppy Parade paper which is retired and I just thought oops, it would be nice just to cover the ends of it or sides of it I should say. So once that's all done, let's pop that on straight. That's not very straight that one. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm really having a good time here at putting these on straight, aren't I? Now, if when you pop your ball, it's a little bit too loose, all you need to do is 
go between hold this open like this and go between and pull out your rubber band and tie a little knot into it that will then allow it to be a little bit tighter so if you don't have a small rubber band don't worry you don't want a, a really thick rubber band because it won't pop very easily so there we go see how that pops beautifully so that's going to be gorgeous on the inside of our ball okay so what we need to do now is move the glue out of the way we're going to construct our card which is the easiest part that was the hard part and I forgot to bring my um, scoreboard so I'm going to turn you off for a moment and I will be back in a few seconds everyone I'm back again and here's my scoreboard now so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our main card piece which is the 11 by five and a half and we're going to score this at the two and three quarter inch mark oops pull my out the other way and we're going to turn it 180 degrees and we're going to score this at the two and three quarter mark again and that's all the scoring we're going to do all that because I forgot my board we had to have a pause in the middle so we're going to fold and burnish these making sure that they're nice and square on both sides and and it matches nicely down the middle this way so we're going to then glue our panels together which I've already done three of so we're going to do the last one. This is the panels that measure five and a quarter by two and five eighths. And we're going to glue our designer series paper onto our contrasting colour. Now, with my other cards, I didn't put a contrasting colour into the middle of these. I'll show you that again in a second. Let me put that one on. These were just plain here. I just put just the designer series paper. So if so, you use the larger size and there's no right or wrong. It's just that that's the way I did it on that one and the other one. But this one I thought I would do because it's so close in colour, I would actually do it that way. So now I'm going to glue my panels onto my card. Now if you don't forget if you've got design series paper that has a direction to make sure you get your direction the correct way. I'm lucky this one's like striped so it's not a big deal. So I'm going to pop that one there. I can't believe that I've used up all of my the poppy paper. I, I love that paper, it was so gorgeous so And we're going to pop two on the inside the same. One on one side and one on the other. Oops down there a bit that's better okay so that's our inside and outside panels done now I've, my other panel which is wherever I've put it here we go that's my other inside panel which has been oh that's got a bit of a crack to it which is the five and a uh, quarter by five and a quarter inch and then five by five which I'd already stuck the designer series paper onto. So I'm making sure that my stripes go the same way again. Let's pop that one on the inside there as well. Okay, so then with our pop-up section, let's move that part of the card out of the way. Our pop-up section is the five and a quarter by five and a quarter, five and by five, and the four and three quarter by four and three quarters. So we need all three colours for the, the pop-up sections. So let's pop those together. What 
beautiful paper on the other side but it's a bit too busy for this card and the fact that I'm doing a beautiful yellow the new bumblebee yellow for my flowers so that's the, our pop up section of our card so let's pop that on one side and let's stamp our greeting for the back of the card and our other pieces now if we stamp these, I can show you what to do, and then we can bring those in ready to do the rest of the card. So what I needed was the new bumblebee colour, which is gorgeous. It's a sort of a very rich uh, yellow that's got like a hint of orange in it. I'm using Mossy Meadow for my leaves and Early Espresso for my... Uh, sentiments so we'll start by uh, bringing in our piece of for our writing panel on the back and a piece of scrap which I have here which has got a menu on it and my large stamp and my sentiment stamp for the back of my panel and I'm going to use my early espresso to stamp my inside which says Know that you you are loved. Oops. And I'll put that in the middle. I'll pop that out of the way for a minute because I'm going to need it again in a minute. And I'm going to bring in my bumblebee. And I'm uh, going to ink my stamp, not stamp my ink. Because it's been a larger stamp. I find that they actually seem to work a lot better when you put your ink onto your stamp and I'm stamping that one off the corners like so just to give that some interest so let's pop that one out of the way and we don't need that anymore a scrap piece but we're going to stamp two more of these beautiful sunflowers which as you know I've already done mine and cut them out, but guess what? My mum's coming to visit this afternoon, so I'll have these all cut out ready for her. And she can then take them home with her. Oh, that one's a bit yucky. Um, I'm also going to stamp my other sunflower. And I'll stamp them there. I didn't bring my colour, um, my... Uh, blender pen so that I could actually colour my leaves on my other oh gosh sunflower but that's okay I'll get that all done before mum and dad get here today so then with my, my mossy meadow I'm going to stamp myself four leaves and again I will cut these out using this the dies and I would also color these with my let's pop that there with my mossy meadow um, blender pen so I've done those and let's pop the lid on that out the way let's pop that out of there oh I haven't got another piece of card to show you how I stamped my Sentiment, so I need a piece of card a bit bigger. I've already stamped my sentiment. Now with my sentiment, you will notice that my dies do not come in that length. So what I did is I picked the one that was the right length for this project, which is not that one, it must be the next one along. There you go, that one. And I popped that on my piece of card and cut it out. Then what I did is I move my, my die along and placed it so that it was over the stitch marks and brought it down to the size that I wanted. So there's always ways to make your sentiments the, the way you want them to be. Now I stamped that in um, oh, early espresso so I can pop the lid on that one too out of the way. So, and let's pop them out of the way and I will show you that I have already cut out all my flowers and, oops, and leaves. 
So there's my two other flowers. I actually coloured those ones in. My sentiment, my big flowers, my four leaves, and out of my yellow piece, and I did bring in a little piece of brown to pop in the middle there, but I popped that on there and I cut out one that was actually just the, the filigree pattern of it. So let's pop them out of the way because I'll do those for Mum later before she gets here. And let's stick our writing panel onto the back of our card. It's better to put, do your writing panel and pop it onto the back of your card before you actually do your pop-up section because it can be a little bit difficult to get it nice and even if not. So that's my back writing panel. Because of the little bit of bulkiness in it, it's nicer to put that on while it's nice and straight. So let's turn our card over and what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our popping ball and we're going to pop some glue onto the bottom part of this ball. And we need to make sure that one of these straight panels, when it's pushed down, let's push it down flat, needs to be at the top and the bottom. So this part of the ball here needs to be top and bottom square. That way these will fit inside the, the area, but when you pop your bit on there, it will stay in there. So we'll pop that in there, and as I say, you must remember this edge and this hedge must be top and bottom. We can't have it off the side, otherwise it this will not pop straight up. Once we've got that on there, we can pop that up. We can see it's going to pop beautifully. Now I'll put my worst one down the bottom because that one's got a little hole in it, for goodness knows why. So we're going to then pop some glue onto this bottom one here, this one and only one down the bottom. So you're making sure that's the bottom if you've got a uh, directional paper. And then we're going to lay this on top flat, making sure that it is within the crease lines. We don't want it outside of our lines, otherwise it's not going to pop nicely and it's not going to close nicely. Once that's on there nice and tight, we can then let it go and see that it just pops up beautifully. So our card is now ready for us to decorate. So let's decorate our pop-up piece and I'm going to start by putting a couple of these little ones I've put for the, the front on the belly band. So I'm going to pop these down on that angle like so. So I'm going to push this down and I'm going to bring in something heavy. Let's say my block there just so I can pop these on. I'm going to pop these up onto some dimensions. I have some the larger ones because I've, once again I've run out. I think we go through hundreds of these things. So I will pop my first one on here. I think my second one I'll pop over here, so here what I need dimensions on one side. Making sure that you don't go outside of your thing, your pop-up section, and then I'm going to pop this one on here like so. I will need one on the edge here. And a little bit of glue over this side of this. I'm then going to put some of my leaves, which I have coloured with... Um, I think that was... Granny apple green, actually, that I coloured them with. So 
there we go and then I'm going to pop this over this side for a moment because I want to pop my my let's celebrate up here so I'm going to put a couple more dimensions onto this one one in there and one in the middle and a little bit of glue on the edge here just so that it sticks down nicely because I don't want to, it to stick up and I can pop, let's celebrate, oh did I didn't pull the backs off of those, that how silly was that there we go, oops let's celebrate you let's move that down a bit, that's better and that's our pop-up, so when our card pops open it's going to pop up like so. How gorgeous does that look, eh? I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, see how what I meant about making sure that you don't go over the edge. So, let's move that one while well, it's still not stuck properly. Let's move that one in a tiny bit more. Pop a bit more glue on there. And glue that in a bit further. That's better. And... There's our pop-up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do our belly band. So we're going to close our card over. Now this is, it will look a bit tight if you put a lot of uh, dimensions on it. But it still lays fairly flat to go into a nice envelope. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the back of the card. And we're going to pop our belly band around the middle. And very loosely, because we don't want it to be tight, we're going to pop it around. We don't want a belly band that is tight as tight because otherwise it doesn't slide. Pop a bit of glue down the side of our band and then bring our top over. Now, if you're putting your designer series paper on like I have done on this one here, let's pull this one here in. You will do exactly the same and glue it around. But as I don't have any more of this designer series paper, mine's not going to do that. But it's still going to come up and pop up when we finish. So let's pop that one out of the way and we will have a look at them all. After. So I have my join at the front only because what I want to do is I'm going to pop my bat, my flowers on like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this one on flat and put a bit of glue on there making sure that I don't go over onto the card so and the way to do that is to pull your belly band off see how mine's quite tight and making sure there's no glue over the top I'm just giving that a little bit of a knock down I'm going to pop my other one here, and I'm going to pop that one up onto a couple of dimensions as well. Let's pick those ones up over there and pop it in the rubbish. And pop that one onto the other side here, like so. And then I will just glue my leaf down on this side here. Underneath that one, just to give it that last piece. Let's put my pin in my glue, give that a few seconds to dry and my belly band will slide onto there just beautifully, well as beautifully as can be. This one is a little bit tight but it does become looser as you use it. Making sure that it's, <laughs> I have done this very tight haven't I? Uh, Oops. Making sure that, there we go, that we get our band on there nicely. I have got a tiny bit tight, but with time it will loosen as this lays flatter for a while. So that's our card for today. Let's pop the band off one more time and pop this out of the way. And we will move my thing and pop it up. Oh! We had him upside down. Doesn't matter. Pop him up. There we go. That's our pop-up card for today. There's my original one. And I hope you've enjoyed these. They are really easy to make. As I say, it's a Karen Berniston pop-up ball die. 
or the popping ball template will be with the tutorial. I love it. I love it. <laughs> How do you think? What do you think? Please, if you've liked my card, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I do read all the comments that are left for me. And I would love to see you again next week. Bye for now.